In this video, we're going to talk about how to manage your background music in retail and other environments. Music has a huge impact on our experience, no matter what we're doing. Many of us continually play music in the background while we work, while we clean, while we're doing things at home. And when we commute, we often have earbuds in. So mu music is continually around us. It taps our emotions. Music can be uplifting. It can make us sad. It can tear at our heartstrings. And it can make us want to dance. My wife often says, if they didn't want you to dance in grocery stores, then they shouldn't play music in the background, right? Music can soothe and entice your customers, pull them in, be very welcoming. Or the music you play can drive customers out. And there's been many cases where I've walked out of coffee shops, out of restaurants, or even out of stores because I could not handle the music being played. So you don't want this to be happening to you. So your background music choice is critical. And this is something in the digital signage world we don't often pay a lot of attention to. We're very focused on the advertising, the visuals, the movement on the screens and things like that. But we forget about the other sense, the, the auditory uh, that is around us all the time. So what music are you serving to your customers? What music are, are you providing to them? And how do you choose the right music for your customers? So first off, we highly recommend you don't play the radio. The radio is filled with advertising, uh, including your competitors. So you might have a lovely restaurant, you're playing the background radio, and the restaurant might talk about the special from the rib place or the pizza place down the street. So you're essentially giving your competitors free access to your existing clients. And there's lots of talking in radio. I mean, even ones that say, oh, you know, we'll give you 60 minutes of uninterrupted music. They still have talking in between those, those times and things like that because they have to pay for their their time with advertising. So there's a lot of talk going on. It's not just music. And many times in the radio, you might find, oh, maybe half the songs are, are kind of fit your environment, but the other half might be jarring or even 25% might be very jarring for your environment. And suddenly that can, can throw people when they've been hearing these lovely sounds and suddenly it just goes different. And Sometimes when you're tuning in a radio station, maybe you haven't got a quite strong enough signal and you might get a slight bit of static. And for people who are auditory, all they hear is the static. It really annoys those people. So first step is don't play the radio. And don't use your personal playlist. I'm sorry, uh, but chances are you are not your, your ideal customer. Uh, everything in your playlist is probably not going to fit what your customers are looking for. No matter how much you love to sing to these tunes in the shower, they may not be suitable for the background of your store, your restaurant, uh, your spa, whatever it is you're providing. And don't let your employees choose the mix. So this is often a problem, especially if you've got younger employees working late in the evenings and nobody's around. You know, they will crank the tunes, turn up the, the volume a lot and play what they want to hear. And suddenly your, your sales are dropping in the evening and you've no idea why. It's because the music is driving your customers out of, out of your store. So you want to be monitoring what music's being played. You want to control the music being played, monitor it so you know uh, what's coming through there. So that was the what I talked about with not just letting your, your staff choose the music and to pop in occasionally in evenings just to make sure everything is being done to your satisfaction and that the music has not been changed. Now, don't annoy your staff. I said, don't let your staff pick the music, but you could also annoy your staff if you've got the same music playing over and over. My wife, I uh, worked in retail for a while, and she said there was this one playlist that the store had that seemed to repeat about twice every hour, and some of the songs just annoyed her, and yet she couldn't get away with it because she was there for like eight hours in the day, and so she'd hear the same song probably 16 times. So make sure you have a wide, varied playlist that fits your target audience so you're not going to be overplaying the same songs and annoying your staff. 
you want the music to be uh, inobtrusive. You want the volume to be truly background. If people can't talk to each other, if they can't hear each other, the music is too loud. You don't want to be playing it that loud. Now, there, there might be alternatives, perhaps, if you're in a skateboard shop or you're very young uh, people coming in, you might want it louder. But for the most part, if in a quiet restaurant, people want to be able to talk to each other. Uh, it's different if you're in a dance hall. Yes. You want the dance music to be loud enough to dance to, but otherwise think about what is it your customers are doing? Do they want to be talking to each other through, through their purchase? Do they want to be talking to each other while they're having coffee or tea or a glass of wine? I strongly recommend you focus on instrumental rather than voice and lyrics. Instrumental music is more background. Uh, people you know, aren't, don't have to have the music lyrics. It can be a problem. Sometimes music lyrics on some songs, especially rap songs, can be offensive to some people. So that way, by having instrumental music, you're getting away from some, the fact that some of the lyrics uh, may be offensive and it becomes truly background because the music is instrumental. So you want the right music for your venue and brand. You know, fit. You want it to fit the theme and the brand of your business. So who are you trying to attract? Are you classy? Are you hard rock? Is it a party place? Are you soothing or, or is it ethnic? You know, so, so that's the kinds of things you want to say is what are, what is this part of our musical identity? What's our musical identity that we want to put out there to people? And that's going to make a difference for the kind of audience you're going to attract. If you've got the wrong music, if you get the party music, you're not going to attract the you know classy people, the people who are looking for the classy experience. So let's talk about a few examples. Now think of an Italian restaurant. If you went to an Italian restaurant and they're playing rap, it just doesn't fit, does it? I mean, if an Italian restaurant, you're expecting romantic music, perhaps classical, um, you know, background, you're expecting to be able to talk, have a nice glass of wine. There's an experience you expect with a fine Italian restaurant and any other restaurant as well. Keep in mind, uh, I just use Italian restaurant as an example. Uh, you know, definitely you're going to want to have a, a different sounds. In a Greek restaurant, you're probably going to have very different sounds in an Italian restaurant. But again, you want it to be themed for a Greek restaurant in that case. If you have a youth clothing store, the music can be a little more in your face, a little, you know, something that's going to appeal to them, something that's going to be a little bit hard rocker, you know, hard rocking, something they're going to be attracted to and they're going to want to come into. So very different from your Italian restaurant. You wouldn't be playing the same music in both. When I go to an antique shop, I love it when they play an oldies. Oldies music is what I love to hear. I mean, to me, that just makes sense. You're in an antique shop and you're going to hear music from the 50s and 60s. You know, hear the oldies and things like that. It fits the theme, uh, gets you in the mood, gets you nostalgic. So you think, oh, maybe I should you know, take these things home, even though I have no room for them. Uh, you know, maybe I'd, I'd like a piece of my history back or, or a piece of history uh, to be sitting on my shelf. Think of a luxury boutique, what you're looking for. And there's also women and men, you know, so on the right hand side, I'm showing a men's, uh, you know, a men's uh, clothing store on the left hand side, I'm showing a woman's accessories, you know, so you'd have different music in each of these. Uh, you'd want it to be classy music, music that's, that's going to interest each of those particular target audiences. And a spa, think of a lovely spa experience with that lovely meditative background music that just makes you go um and helps you find your inner peace. So again, you wouldn't play heavy metal or rap in a spa. Like it just wouldn't it wouldn't really be conducive to the experience. Now, an interesting thing that I've seen done is where you can turn popular hits into background music. There's a group out there called the Vitamin String Quartet, uh, which I found very interesting. I went to a wedding that played their music. So what they did was they've taken common songs that would appeal to young people, like you know, those kinds of hit songs, 
but they turned them into lovely uh, string quartet, you know, like a classical music makeover type thing. And it's great because the young people in the audience are hearing the melody, the you know, the song that they like. They're hearing the, the music that they like. But it's in a classy version that, you know, won't scare off their aunts and uncles and parents uh, and, and the previous generation. So I, I really loved it. It was a great experience. And I thought the music really added to the wedding that I was at. So your average pop radio station just isn't going to fit any of these venue themes, if you think about it. You know, Italian restaurant playing pop radio, it's not going to work. Um, you know, a spa playing pop radio with all the advertising and the wording, it's not going to work. So you don't want to be doing that. Holiday music is a pet peeve of mine as well. Um, many people play bad Christmas music over and over again. Uh, so, you know, once again, I highly recommend you go for instrumental Christmas music. Nobody can be upset over it. Nobody can be offended by it. Uh, and you don't get the same jokey Christmas song, such as Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer over and over. A song I like, by the way, but I don't want to hear it uh, three times an hour while I'm in a store, you know. So, it, again, you're just overdoing these kinds of things. Now, let's talk about copyright issues. You want the music that you play to be legal, so you're not going to get in trouble for playing music or get fined for playing music that's illegal. So what music is illegal to play? You can't just play Spotify or something like that. You can't just play music you purchased in a commercial setting. So just because you've got the CD or you purchased music to download from wherever it was, you can't suddenly play that in a commercial setting. That's for personal use only if you ever read the rules for whatever service you belong to. So if you have music you want to license, uh, these are some of the groups that license music, so you need to look for who you can license uh, from in your country. Uh, there are some commercial business music licensing services from Sirius and, and Pandora that you can check into. Uh, but there's some other ways around this as well, because this can get very expensive, so I'll, I'll talk about some alternatives as well. So one thing you can do is you can sell music even in small amounts. So if you sell music, you are allowed to play pre-recorded music to promote the retail sales. You can only play music you're selling. So it's a great way to partner and promote some local artists. So you don't have to be a dedicated music store for this. Many coffee shops, gift shops, uh, metaphysical shops, etc., sell music that, that fits their theme. And because they're selling the music, then they can play it and there's no licensing requirements in this particular case. So look into that. And you notice Starbucks uh, is very common that they're continually selling music up at the counter and they've got that same music playing uh, in the background. So a great way to get around all the, the copyrighted music. Approach local musicians to license and feature their music. It uh, helps promote local talent or sell, again, you can sell their music in your shop or restaurant. So a great way to, to you know, give back to the community, help some local artists get, get better recognized, uh, you know, and to find the right music that's going to fit your theme. You can also look for copyright-free music, for example, uh, music such as Beethoven and Bach uh, and, and the famous, that music is in the public domain. Keep in mind that the playing of that music by your favorite orchestra is not in the public domain. <laughs> so you would have to look for, uh, you know, royalty-free music sources in these particular cases uh, to be able to do that. But yes, music you, you play yourself is... Um, you know, you're allowed to play, uh, you know, music you've created yourself, music you've written yourself, uh, those kinds of things. Or you can look for public domain music from uh, pdinfo.com. Some sources, other sources, licensed music, Ben Sound and Hook Sounds. You can look for others, of course, online, but they often have packages that you can license from as well. And to manage all these musical backgrounds, uh, we have a tool for you. Our iPoint uh, scheduler program is a Windows-based system to manage audio across your entire digital signage network. So it doesn't just manage audio, it also manages your videos, your advertising, um, and, and all your other, you know, your, your graphics, your JPEGs, all those other things as well. But I... Uh, point which many people don't realize will also handle your audio. So this handles your MP3, your WAV files, uh, your you know WMA files, etc. So that's our take on managing musical backgrounds in retail and other environments. If you'd like to know more, uh, please ask us any questions. And as always, you can find out more at presentationpoint.com.
Thanks for listening.